Matt Canada has one year left on a contract, so this is it for him. And in the past, you could have said, Joe Starkey, that there were reasons why he couldn't in, you know, utilize his entire offense. Ben Roethlisberger is older. He got two guys on the uh, offensive line who were rookies. Last year was because of musical rotating uh, quarterbacks. This year, no excuses, right? Well, how much pressure is he under? A ton. Uh, Randy Muller from The Athletic, no relation to Chris, <laughs> put it this way, former NFL executive of the year said that Canada's under more pressure to advance this offense than Kenny Pickett is to execute it, and I believe that. I think I, he's right. I also believe a good quarterback can make up for a coordinator, and I think Pickett might save him. I think the best thing that Canada has going for him is the relationship with Kenny. Reminds me a lot of uh, Rodgers and Hackett, where if the quarterback is really good and just trusts the offensive coordinator on a personal level, it works. Mm -hmm. uh, because the quarterback, he doesn't, doesn't matter what the X's and O's say. He overcomes that. I, I look at Canada as a guy that ultimately, though, will hold the Steelers back in the biggest moments. I, I, I think there are excuses for him, but I also think there's reasons why he was a college offensive nomad. He was not a great college coordinator. He had one great year at Pitt, so I'm still very skeptical, Chris. I, I mean, but you're, the first year you had a, a quarterback who couldn't move by anybody's definition, a 39-year-old quarterback, and, and it was very limited in the offense there. The second year you had a backup quarterback starting for you, and then you had a rookie quarterback. Right. So there were and, and, and it was smart to, to keep the it was there, there was logic in keeping the continuity. Now it's like the things that people get mad at Matt Canada for the jet sweeps. Now when Calvin Austin does it, it looks a lot better. So be the personnel when you're doing it with Gunnar Olszewski or, or, or tight ends or whatever else there is now. I mean, he's uh, been but, horrible for two years. But I think we, but, that, but that doesn't even feel that, like an opinion. Could it you agree, like though, that he didn't have you, you necessary the weapons line. to do maybe what he wanted but to Bob, do? But, Bob, I've plus, also heard plus, you. Plus, there was the head coach saying, we can't turn the ball over. You've got to, you know, anytime, if you're an athlete and you play defensively, if you're a golfer trying to make a putt defensively, you're not going to make it. Joe, you're a golfer now. Well, I don't. first of all, I don't think he was ready for this job. And then, secondly, you are right that he was saddled in a way with Ben. That that was, and I don't think that they thought, Ben was coming back. Agreed. I don't think so. And then once he's back, you pretty much lose a year because you have to acquiesce to what Ben wants to do because he's going to do it anyway, right? Yeah, I agree with that, but I also feel like we have evidence, and I've heard you say this, Bob, the last two years, when did the offense look the best? When Canada was taken out of it. When Ben in the second halves of games just yes. did his thing. And Kenny, Kenny Pickett at the Kenny. end of games. I mean, right. and you here's can't ignore that, thing. Bob. I'm not. Here's what the I'm most saying is thing. I think when you go into a season preaching, don't make mistakes constantly, you're on your mind. You're not. You're not. Like, I for example, this is what I'm going to say this year, Chris. If they go away from the go route to George Pickens because it has a failure once or twice, that doesn't mean you should stop going to it. You need to keep going to it because he's going to win most of those battles. He may throw an interception as a result. That doesn't mean you should not go back to it. You just talked about how much better the roster is this year. You, I, it might have been off the air. I don't know. But the Kevin Dotson and Kendrick Green were starting for the Steelers or two years ago, and that was the off, that's what he had to work with. Now, I, you're going to, what I'm saying, you can judge him this year, I, I think now. I, I think no, I've, enough, I, I, and, and, I've judged him the last judge, two years. You can, you, I mean, you can judge you, what, him. But. What you're saying is right. He was handcuffed in some ways. I, that's, that's a fact, too. But to me, the most damning thing about Matt Canada is the starts, the first quarters. You spend all week yep. that's a good scripting point. plays, right. and they never, ever scored early in games. What does that say about him? No, I think that's a good point. There's no question about that. All right, defensively, tell me what you think, Andrew, real quick about this team defensively. They have brought in Peterson. They have a lot of great players. They also have some younger players. What is your expectation? And if the offense makes it easier for them, that would certainly help. Well, they got Mike Tomlin, and they got T.J. Watt back healthy. So you take that, and they should be one of the best defenses in the NFL. The amount of money they've spent on that side of the ball, they should be top five. So you would expect top five I would. or I'd, better? Well, I would. I would say the one area that could blow the whole thing up is that the secondary is bad. And I'd like to think that we've seen Omar Khan be very aggressive. You just moved yourself up in the draft with the Dotson pick. You need to look around for an outside corner. It sounds like James Pierre is going to make this team by default. He stinks. He shouldn't. He was like one of the worst players in the preseason. And he was the only guy, guy you were complaining about in two out of those three <laughs> games. They got to, right? I mean, they've got to find somebody else at that position. And the other thing is with Peterson, I was very bullish on that pick, that, that signing. 
but he also did not look great in that Buffalo game. They went down the field on him, so that's the one Achilles heel, I think. Yeah, the secondary. outside corner, I think, is because even if they do bring in a veteran, it's not probably not going to be a high-level veteran, and they already are. They're dangerously thin there anyway because Peterson probably shouldn't be an outside. Th I think that was the, one of the takeaways from camp is that Patrick Peterson should not be an outside corner anymore. He can still be a good defender. He can still survive on his savvy and everything else. If Joey Porter Jr., there's so much is riding on Joey Porter Jr. I don't think he's going to start, Chris. Enough. I think we see enough that we think he can play, but if he can't, that, that could really That'll change a lot of positions also. Yes. We got to go to break on that note. Sorry, Joe, I know you wanted to say something. You might get a chance when we come back. If not, we're going to move on to talk about Pitt, West Virginia, and Penn State. Who knows what's next? Stick around.